Alright guys, today we're looking at the Esky US Soldiers or Marine Corps in uh, 172. This is quite an old kit, uh, you're talking late 70s, early 80s, um, and it isn't a, a full set as we might recognise it today. In other words, there isn't uh, you know, 50 pieces in the box. I mean, you're looking at basically um, oh, geez, under 20, I'd imagine, thereabouts. We'll have a look in a moment. Um, and these are kind of a self-assembly kind of a, a set where you have to put together the, the figures themselves or at least components of them. Uh, anyway, the artwork there at the front uh, looks quite nice. Uh, might look a little bit familiar as well. They're a little bit uh, familiar to, in relation to the uh, Airfix 132 or 172 sets, which we'll have a little uh, look at in a moment. Um, so basically you have a guy with a... a mine detector back there, a um, guy with a flamethrower in front of him and a guy with a bazooka. Um, you have a kind of a lieutenant or lieutenant as I'd say in the US uh, at the back there. Um, the weapon is in the wrong hand, um, he's uh, leaving that there backwards there, but uh, you also have uh, an advancing corporal here. Uh, it's, uh, let's see an African American chap represented. Um, and you have a submachine gunner with a grease gun bazooka, crawling guy, and guy with 30 caliber uh, uh, machine gun. Um, now the poses are a little bit inaccurate. Uh, the bazooka guy is actually standing, the rifleman is actually kneeling, um, this crawling guy is actually the ammo supply guy, or number two assistant, whatever you call it. Um, the pose for the submachine gunner is a little bit off. Um, the rifleman is pretty much okay. Um, and as I say, the, 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 the lieutenant at the back there is a little bit inaccurate as well, but it's a general representation. What you're looking at there really is a, is a good representation of some of the airfix figures uh, on which a lot of these are based on, and that's the airfix guys from this uh, 172 kind of set, or they even a copy from the 132 even. Um, so that's that. Um, but uh, quite a nice little set. I'm looking forward to getting these guys together. I'm doing a rapid fire battalion. I'm going to try and incorporate these guys into the uh, Airfix World War II US Marines set as well and see how well they match up. Uh, however, the Esky guys here are a little bit larger. So we'll have a look at a sprue and uh, we'll put my rambling there. Um, the box is the same on uh, both sides as you can see there, so there's not much more to say about that. Um, anyway, have a look at a sprue. So. Um, the sprue itself, as you can see there, uh, basically you have uh, nice representations and nice detail uh, of the figures, uh, in fairness. Uh, top guy there is, uh, as you can see, a rifleman firing uh, the uh, M1 carbine. Uh, so you get four of those guys in the top row, another one there in the, uh, the middle rows or the lower row there as well. Um, and a nice figure to have in fairness. Uh, basically it's a kind of a cross between the bazooka guy uh, from the Airfix set and the standing rifleman. Um, just maybe even done a little bit better. Uh, we'll see how they uh, how they work out later on. Uh, down here you can see this is the chap I was talking about, the, uh, the lieutenant, I keep saying lieutenant. Um, not represented in the 172 Airfix uh, set unfortunately but present here. Uh, another one of those riflemen and you have here a, a grease gun or a M3 uh, submachine gun. Uh, again a cross between the Airfix uh, grease gunner and the Airfix guy advancing um, this kind of uh, chap here. Um, so it's kind of a little bit of a mishmash of that. Uh, down here you have a very nice uh, mine detector. Um, Two, two figures there, that's quite cool in fairness um, and doesn't appear in the 172 Airfix set or the 132 Airfix set either. Um, two more of those grease gunners and here is a really cool um, representation of the uh, bazooka guy and as far as I can see it's really kind of the standing rifleman and the bazooka guy uh, kind of <laughs> a mutation of the two um, but I think it's a really cool pose I'm really looking forward to seeing how that works out uh, you get some backpacks and bits and pieces there I've found that these things generally don't work out so well the backpacks um, I tried it on the Esky uh, paratroopers uh, red devils whatever they were uh, from uh, this particular range uh, and kind of style and uh, they didn't really do it for me so I didn't utilize them so I have a feeling that might be the situation here too but we'll see as we uh, go forward the other sprue here then um, yep 
so you have uh, the advancing uh, rifleman there, uh, which is quite nice. Um, now that is kind of a copy of this guy, slightly varied a little bit as you can see. The leg is on the ground where it's slightly raised here, uh, but minor variances. One has fallen off, but I actually have him here, although he is damaged. Um, and then there's one of these figures where you have to kind of assemble a few bits and pieces. Uh, here you have uh, what is originally the airfix crawling guy, but he's actually the guy for the uh, 30 cal machine gun. 30 cal is not done too badly, I have to say. Uh, looks quite nice. We'll see how that works out. Uh, you have a flamethrower there, and there's the, uh, the uh, tripod for the 30 cal as well. Uh, I kind of prefer it in that format actually too, uh, in comparison to the version that the Airfix do, so uh, we'll see how that works out, it's going to be interesting. Uh, backpacks here, and this looks like it is possibly for the uh, mine detector. You also have an ammo box and there's a the flamethrower. Uh, there is your uh, number two, your assistant for the um, the Tartical, and here is uh, looks like an ammo belt. Uh, so we'll see how that works out. Uh, and then you basically have just some uh, some bases uh, for them, and that's that. Uh, so when they're basically stuck to their bases, they will look like this chap here. Um, all going well. Um, if I could just get that to focus for me, any second now. Uh, there we go, almost, yeah, yeah, oh god, there we go, right, uh, and there is the uh, the airfix guy, so they're close enough um, to get away, but I think uh, the esky guy is a little bit chunkier, uh, maybe fractionally taller, it's kind of hard to tell there, but uh, definitely a little bit chunkier, uh, now, as you know, the airfix, if you have a look at my airfix video, uh, airfix US Marines World War II, uh, there is a size variance in the set, these are the, the, the chunkier of the, the the contents of that set, so we'll have to see how the uh, the three size uh, proportion variants uh, work together. But that'll that'll come down the down the line. We'll see how that works out in the next part of the video. Um, so that's that. Also contained within the box um, is these uh, instructions. Uh, so that kind of just basically shows you how to assemble the uh, the flamethrower guy. Well, just kind of basically shows to put on his back. Doesn't show how to put them together properly, but. Um, and then you ha also have the uh, 30 cal, uh, which I think has been fed from the wrong side, um, although it isn't on that one, I don't know, whatever, we'll see how that works out. Um, and that, that's the assembly instructions for that, and nothing on the other side. So that's it. Um, this is a US Soldiers Marine Corps Esky. Uh, we will be back to you in a second with some of those guys painted up, and we'll see what happens. We're going to stick them in the uh, Airfix 132 recommended colours to match in with the uh, Airfix 172 I'm doing as well, as well excuse me, um, for a battalion, and we'll see what happens there. There isn't any mortars um, in either set, so I might have to do some conversion. Again, we'll see how that works out. So, that's it guys. Uh, back in a second with the painted uh, figures from Esky. Talk to you then. Bye now. Hey guys, as you can see, we've returned with the completed and uh, painted figures there. Uh, quite simple, quite easy to do. Uh, painted up nicely, and of course, these are being done in the same colour scheme as recommended by Airfix on the back of their 132 scale set for their uh, US Infantry, US Marines, whatever they want to call them. Um, as you can see, the poses are quite similar there, and I have one or two little comparisons to show you in conjunction to that. Um, so yeah, basically very handy, very straightforward, painted up quite nicely, I really like them. Um, we can just get you a little look there to see what I did there. Uh, one of the ones which isn't included in the uh, Airfix set, shall we say, is this little chap here who I really like, who is the flamethrower. Now he kind of matches in actually better with the kind of skinny Airfix uh, guys uh, in the Airfix US Marines 172 set. Uh, rather than the chunkier ones, he's a little bit on the thin side himself because, as I said, this uh, kind of project is to do basically with uh, kind of airfix and the kind of derivatives uh, therein uh, or thereof, shall we say. So that's not going to focus very well for me there, is it? Uh, there we go. So you can see him there, it's basically just a, a US soldier with his, uh, his uh, flamethrower in his backpack. Uh, that was a kind of a piece you had to assemble. Um, which was handy enough. A bit of kind of a weird pose I thought at first, but actually once it's uh, mounted on a, on a base, uh, it doesn't look too bad at all at all. Uh, so, yeah, that's grand. Usual scenario, beer mat, a little bit of Hornby Railway flock from about 25 years ago. That's still in a little plastic tub, and uh, off you go. So that's that guy. Uh, leave him down of the way there. Uh, you can see there at the front you have the uh, officer uh, kind of leading the, uh, the men forward. 
<clears throat> again if we can get a bit of a focus on that I did elect to put the backpacks, back, backpacks on one or two of them in this instance uh, which I had said earlier I wasn't going to do but I actually did because uh, they just seem to be shaped a little bit better than the ones in the Esky uh, Red Devils or British Paratrooper set whatever it was called uh, the kind of uh, compatriot set in the British Paratrooper range for these guys um, so that actually worked out okay um, so that was the officer. As you can see here, uh, I've used uh, the paints um, recommended to do sort of a, a bit of an alternative sort of a scenario. So you'd have the running grease gunner there, and I have one in the uh, the white jacket and one in the green jacket. And as you can see on the back there, there's no backpacks on that lad or that lad. Um, <clears throat> but they turn out okay. Uh, see if I can zoom in there a little bit for you, get a little bit of detail. So they they're fine really. Um, the detail on them isn't going to be massive because they're you know they're old, they're old figures and uh, they're basically not kind of the same as you'd have these days. But uh, I'm quite happy with them. In fairness, they uh, they look fine. They do my they, they match up to my requirements quite nicely. And as I say, they um, they are matching in with kind of a battalion or two I'm doing for uh, rapid fire purposes. So from that perspective, uh, it's all about matching in with the. Uh, with the air fix now that for example there's an air fix guy back there so I think that's quite nice um, to be able to have those variants of poses as you saw in my air fix video I do a little bit of uh, chopping and changing a little bit of uh, customization whatever you'd call it um, so any of the ideas I had that I was going to do to the air fix guys they've already been done in this set so that was kind of handy and um, obviously a bit more professional than I could do so that worked out rather well for me so that's the grease gunner uh, who I quite like I think that's a lo nice pose uh, pity it wasn't actually in the airfix set, uh, rather than including those little smaller, skinnier guys, um, which I have no major problem with in, in the airfix set. But these guys are fractionally larger than the uh, <coughs> the larger airfix ones. So from that perspective, they put the skinnier guys under a little bit of strain, which I'll show you in a moment. So that's the kneeling guy there. Again, backpack on the guy on the left, the green jacket. And uh, no backpack on the guy on the right in a kind of lighter cream jacket. Uh, the magazines and the belts and pouches and stuff are slightly inaccurate here and there. Uh, and But, you look, you're not going to worry too much about it. I mean, it, it, these sets I kind of do from a nostalgia per perspective, really. So, from that uh, angle, you know, you're not going to argue too much about it. Uh, there are better sets out there which are far more accurate. But these are good representation, it has to be said. Um, and they're kind of generic in a sense that you could use them in European theatre or uh, Pacific, whatever. Uh, really kind of what you were doing at the time uh, you could even use them for Korea and stuff like that as well um, if you're doing uh, any kind of diorama or uh, war game scenario so that's it uh, and basically they're just Humbrol enamels and uh, a little bit of null and oil by Citadel uh, washed over them once the paint is dry to give that kind of shading effect and all that kind of thing I didn't even bother dry brushing them so that's uh, that's those guys now uh, what else have we got there so there's the uh, the running chap, um, really kind of standard air fix sort of fare there, uh, even though this is Esky, but as I say, these are copied from the air fix, and there is an air fix example. So, you know, very, very similar, minor differences um, as regards the, uh, the leg and that as well, and slight size difference. I don't know if you can actually see that there, but there is a little bit of a size difference in those guys but they kind of they'll manage okay there's not too much of a discrepancy between them um, from that perspective but they're all right uh, as you can see the back of them there uh, no backpack on that guy and uh, did put a backpack on that guy yeah I did indeed so um, that's that but you know detail wise are pretty good I kind of like the Esky guys to be honest with you because a lot of the uh, more modern stuff is a little bit chunkier in some cases so these guys kind of tie in a bit better um, in a lot of ways uh, so what else we got here? Bazooka guy. I actually love this pose. I think this is really cool and it's just such a pity that Airfix didn't actually do this themselves. But I was actually going to do this myself in a conversion format uh, because as you can see what it is really is the Airfix Rifleman and if I have him handy here, oops, the Airfix uh, kneeling sort of guy, sort of chopped and changed uh, obviously a bit more professionally than I could do it and uh, dropped in there in that scenario. So they actually are quite cool. I really like them. Uh, as you can see, uh, you can actually the strap is painted in here, which I neglected to do on this one. Uh, but hey, there you go. As I mentioned earlier about the uh, skinny guys, that's the skinny chap from uh, the Airfix set. There's a few of those which are quite nice. And if you look at my Airfix uh, 
US Marines video, you'll see what I did with a few of those as regards to conversions. But you can kind of get away with them uh, beside the original Airfix Rifleman just about. But when you start bringing in this guy, there's a massive difference really there, I think myself. I'll use them and I've been painted up for the one battalion, you know, but I'm just letting you guys uh, be aware of that because some people, if they don't like to have things mismatched uh, size-wise and all the rest of it, it doesn't matter me, it bother me a whole lot, but uh, look, just letting you guys uh, be aware of the situation. Now, what you also got with that set was a rather nice figure, which is this chap, um, which is, as you can see, a guy doing a little bit of mind detecting. Um, and I think this is pretty tasty. Uh, nice little set. A uh, little bit of assembly involved. You basically put the backpack on them. That was it. And of course, in all the cases, you had to put the, uh, the stands or the bases on them, should I say. Um, but that was it, really. So again, as you can see, I just up in the alternate uh, kind of colorings. Uh, jacket colors, basically, all I varied, as you can see. Uh, everything else is the same. So that's that just a uh, mine detector. I'm not quite sure how accurate that is to a period piece, but look, it gets the message across. And from a wargaming perspective, it gives you a, uh, a mine detector um, in US uniform, which is nice um, for any wargaming purposes that might require in a scenario that a, a, a mine detector be present. So uh, they're just not a look at that officer there. I don't know if the uh, focus was good on that there the last time, but it might uh, pick up there. Uh, there we go, I think. And I had said before that I was going to use a few of those knockoffs for the airfix. So there's a comparison there. So you can see, obviously, the guy on the left is far superior to the guy on the right. Um, that figure it turns up in the um, what is it? The Fujimi set, and of course, obviously, the Eski set, which we're looking at here. It doesn't uh, turn up in the Airfix set, unfortunately, nor does it turn up in the Hasegawa set. I may have mentioned that earlier, either in the start of this video or I think it was actually in the uh, Airfix video that it was in the, um, the Hasegawa set. It isn't, of course, it's in the Fujimi set. But anyway, that's the knockoff, um, which I will use, but you know, again, a little bit of nostalgia. So that is nearly that. The only other figures that I have there are these guys, which are the machine gun crews. Now, um, I think you can see, just to try and get your comparison up here, you can see what's been done here. The guy up here, and the guy, uh, say, by the guy top, my top right hand fingertip and my bottom left uh, corner uh, thumb tip shall we say you can see where the uh, the bodies have been swapped over basically in order to and this was from Esky this isn't me doing it uh, in order to provide a, a variance of pose uh, this just has to be finished up you have to put the ammo belt in and the ammo box and just finish off shading that gun it's too, uh, too light at the minute um, but that is the original here on the right hand side uh, from the Airfix set, the uh, 30 caliber light machine gun, uh, or medium machine gun, whatever it is, and the crawling guy. There's going to be a little bit of chopping and changing done on those just to get an ammo box in there, as with these guys here, which actually come with the ammo box. Um, but as I say, I'll get around to that. But you can see what's been done there, and uh, that's the Airfix one on the right hand side. Now, this guy, again, uh, again is just the variance of the uh, color scheme and the uh, uh, backpacks, that's all It's there. Again, these aren't actually completed yet, that's why the flock has fallen all over the place. Um, but I wanted to get that on video before I started messing around with any uh, alterations that might uh, might happen. So that's uh, those guys. Um, and we had another look at the we had a look at the flamethrower, didn't we? And we had the officer as well. So that's basically it, guys. That's uh, kind of a look at um, the Esky US Marines um, in... 172, if I can just get this to focus out, or to zoom out for us, there we go, that's kind of it. Um, these are an old set as I say, and, and you can see even on the box art there where there's slight variations, obviously uh, this guy and this guy are chopping change a small bit and so on. Um, but this is part of my uh, kind of focus on the Airfix US Marine set and derivatives thereof, so this is the... Uh, the Esky variant, I will be dealing uh, with and doing a video on the uh, Hasegawa guys fairly shortly. Uh, these are just literally up for painting this evening, so hopefully in the next uh, short while I'll manage to get uh, those together for you. And they'll be painted up similarly because they're going into a battalion of 
uh, Airfix, Eski, and of course Hasegawa, which will be these guys tempting kind of teaser shot there of what's happening there. Um, so what I have to do is because there's no mortar uh, supplied in the Eski or the Airfix or the Hasegawa, uh, I have to kind of jimmy up something. So once I get the the final box down there, the Hasegawa guys. I will uh, convert something into a mortar team, so I will have two battalions and the relevant mortars for rapid fire. So that's it, guys. That is basically uh, the look at the U.S. soldiers, U.S. Marines, whatever we call them, from uh, um, uh, Esky from the uh, I think it's the mid to late seventies, early eighties. Um, thanks very much for sticking this far into the video and listening to me rambling and, and uh, going on about them. Um, I do hope you enjoyed it and that you maybe learn something or you got a little bit of nostalgia or whatever it was so if you'd like and subscribe and hit the old bell for notifications and all that carry on that'd be great and uh, we will talk to you very soon with our next video take care guys all the best for now bye bye